tonight, with new waves of oil closing beaches and destroying lives, yet another BP official makes a startling claim. The problem is we have video that disproves it. We're keeping them honest. We'll play that for you shortly. But we begin tonight with a death, a death that has stunned many here in the Gulf. This is Alan Cruz, a fishing boat captain in Alabama. He took his life yesterday, a single gunshot wound to the head. He died aboard his boat. The coroner has ruled it a suicide. Now, suicide is a difficult thing to comprehend, and no one can ever really know the forces that lead someone to it. Alan Cruz left no note. A charter fishing boat captain until the spill, but these days he was working for BP on cleanup duty, going out day after day in the waters that once made him a living and in so many ways gave him a life. His friends say the oil spill and all that's happened since weighed heavily on him. Some noticed he'd been losing weight. Now, we don't know what happened that made him end his life, but the concern here now is that he will not be the last. All around the Gulf, the strain is growing. Church groups are bringing in extra clergy along the coast. 1,500 people have received counseling, according to Catholic Charities. Experts are seeing more drinking, more domestic violence, more anger and despair. Here's David Mattingly. People who knew him say Alan Cruz lived to fish. And those closest to him say that life unraveled when the oil spill hit the Gulf waters where he worked. He thought it was dead. Yep. He said that to you? Yep. And that there was no hope that the fishing was ever going to come back? Not in his lifetime. Among charter boat captains in Orange Beach, Alabama, Cruz was a leader, drumming up business and good times. And the fishing's going to be good all summer. And voicing the frustrations of a community in the bad times. The day that the oil entered the Gulf, my phone quit ringing. Just a month after that interview, Cruz was found on his boat dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. For 14 days, he had worked for BP hauling boom and looking for oil. His brothers say he felt like his role in the cleanup as a BP vessel of opportunity uh, was worthless. That's, that's what he told you? Yes. That he felt like he was being put out there just for show? Yes. That's what he told his wife. Didn't tell me that. That's what he told his wife. That's what she told me just a while ago. He told me it was madness. Cruz's friends tell me he felt overwhelmed by the enormity of the disaster and that they're all feeling the stress. This has been a long-term situation. This started in 2004 yeah. with a direct hit from Hurricane Ivan. Then the next year was Katrina. Then skyrocketing fuel prices, fishing regulations, and then an oil spill. This has been six years that this area has really suffered a lot of stress. Stress that his friends believe finally became too much for Cruz, and now they're worried about others. Are you afraid that maybe one of your other friends out there might be thinking about something extreme? Sure. We worry about that. We worry about you that know. every day. What are you going to do about it? That's why we're trying to get the word out. As a gesture to the community that's now grieving for him, Cruz's family thought it would be best for his boat to be brought back here to home port in Orange Beach. And here it is right now, the rookie. His friends say that there's really no better way that they could think of to pay tribute to a man who loved what he did for a living and loved the waters where he worked. It's the rookie's final voyage, carrying a cargo of uncertainty and sorrow. David Mattingly, CNN, Orange Beach, Alabama. Man, it is a lot, a lot of hurt down here. A lot of what really amounts to maybe post-traumatic stress with a key difference, of course, for returning troops. The immediate cause of the stress is over for hundreds of thousands of people around the Gulf. The strain just keeps on going and there's no end date in sight. The Exxon Valdez spill apparently sparked a wave of suicides. We've already seen a U.S. congressman from down here getting choked up during hearings in Washington. It's going to be a long time before people here heal.